कुमार सामी नायक है बोम वाली बुलेटो का रेडियो फिजी टू में पुराना गाना लगे हमें बहुत अच्छा लगे रेडियो फिजी टू देश की धड़कन Good evening, Fiji. In this bulletin, RKS principal relocated and students suspended. Two new cases of COVID-19. And PM denies claims of division within Fiji first. From the studios of FBC Suva, Jackie Spade. 16 Ratukandavu level school students involved in protests at the institution last week will be suspended, while the school principal Arvind Prasad has been granted his request to be relocated. Minister for Education Rosie Akbar has also revealed that some RKS staff are alleged to have been involved in inciting the students, and those teachers will be investigated. Apanisa Wangarandovu has more. The Minister for Education says the suspended students breach the students' behavioral policy she says they will be provided with counseling and academic support during the suspension period. The actions of the students breach the student behavior management policy. We are suspending 16 students. 16 students are going to be indefinitely suspended for breaching the student behavior management policy. Akbar says the ministry will also carry out separate investigations on claims regarding some teachers who encourage the students to protest. There were some staff involved as well in inciting the students. That is something that we will not talk about. When I say staff, staff includes uh, teachers and other staff uh, employed by the Ministry of Education at RKS. With Principal Arvind Prasad granted his request to relocate to another school, the Ministry has made arrangements for the temporary overseeing of RKS. The Ministry has identified the Director Secondary, Mr. Presefo Masibwe, to oversee the operations of uh, RKS on Tuesday while we, um, uh, while we call for an expression of interest for a new principal for RKS. The minister says grievances must be addressed using the proper channel and not through methods that disrupt classes. Classes at RKS will now resume on Tuesday. Apeniso Wangarandovu, FBC News. Two more people have tested positive for COVID-19. They are both male Fijian citizens aged 55 and 22. These confirmations bring Fiji's total number of active board of quarantine cases to five. The two were among the 83 passengers who came on a repatriation flight from New Delhi on August 27th. The ministry says both gentlemen have been hygienically secured in the isolation ward at the Nandi Hospital. Neither were displaying symptoms at the time of testing. The ministry re reiterates these tests were run as part of Fiji's standard border quarantine process. The ministry assures that as per Fiji's infection control protocols, all areas of Nandi Airport accessible to passengers from that flight have been hygienically deep cleaned. As per Fijian border quarantine protocol, all disembarking passengers from that flight were tested for the virus. But all 83 other passengers on board the flight have returned negative results. The government has brushed aside articles by a former communications consultant from Australia who's been writing about supposed rumblings within Fiji First. Graham Davis, who has returned to Australia, has been posting lengthy articles against the government claiming that the cabinet is divided. Graham Davis's blog posts have been used by opposition MPs claiming there is a division within Fiji First. Their old friend, Mr. Speaker, their old friend, their old friend, Mr. Speaker. Graham Davis says that, you know, they're, they're divided. The caucus is divided. I have nothing to say about what Dave, Graham Davis is posting, but I have an issue with uh, what Bhiman is saying, the Honorable Bhiman Prasad is saying, because he's obviously relying on somebody who's disgruntled about some particular aspect. Prime Minister Voreng Mbani Marama has today made it clear that the former media consultant's posts have no bearing on how the government is run. Any comments on how Mr. Graham Davis's blog site is being used to attack? Sorry, I don't read blog sites. While the blog posts seem to be gaining traction with opposition MPs, the advice from government is to take Davis's comments with a grain of salt. That's a, a hallmark of uh, uh, Honorable Prasad. He doesn't care about others. He wants, he's looking to 20, 2022. That's all he's looking at. So, I mean, Graham Davis's own view, that's his entitlement to it. Uh, you know, sitting in Sydney, that's his choice to make. Whether these facts, are, whether what he's alleging is actually fact is another matter. That's the point. Thank you. Bani Morama says the Fiji First government is united. Edwin Nand, FBC News.
The Prime Minister has set the record straight on the offer of a bipartisan approach, saying he believes the opposition MPs never have had or do have any meaningful contribution. Vorenge Mbani Marama also revealed that he once invited NFP leader Professor Bimar Prasad to help with the budget. However, Prasad rejected the invitation. Kritika Kumar reports. The Prime Minister has reiterated that the efforts of the opposition are a little too late, as he believes it's totally arrogant for them to be late at the nationwide Talanoa. I still remember the day I invited Honorable Biman Prasad to come and help with, the, with the, the budget then. He didn't want to come in. Maybe he was, uh, by that time, he was not uh, yet in the party. Maybe he was thinking of joining a party then. Now he's in the party, now he wants all this bipartisan approach. NFP leader Professor Biman Prasad taking offence at this statement by the PM, stating his reasons for not taking up the Prime Minister's offer. Any Order. Prime Minister who, who comes out here, you know, who's, who's, who's come out of the barrel of the gun to say that we are not prepared to help, now that he's the elected Prime Minister. Meanwhile, the Prime Minister also questioned opposition leader Siti Veni Rambuka as to why none of their members showed up at the budget consultation. Where was the honourable member during the consultation for our national budget? Where was he? He should be asked that. We know exactly where he was. He was locked up in various hotels around Suva, fighting with his fellow party members for power. Beni Marama adds that a bipartisan approach needs to come from the heart. He adds the opposition has lost their opportunity to contribute to the budget by not being present at the consultations. Kritika Kumar, FBC News. National Federation Party President Piyati Kunduandua has refused to respond to comments by Prime Minister Burreng and Bani Marama in Parliament. Bani Marama revealed that he sacked Tikunduandua twice and that helped he helped the former minister build a farm road for free. Sir, Bula, I was hoping you might have a minute uh, about uh, certain comments by the Prime Minister about him uh, sacking you twice and then rehiring you. Would you be able to comment on why you were terminated? <laughs> no, no, not at this time. No. So he also said that uh, he helped uh, build a free road, uh, a road to your farm for free. Why did that happen? No, that's not true. Do you have anything else to add to those statements, sir? Uh, no, thank you. Up ahead, 30,000 senior citizens not using subsidized bus cards. And hotel donates linen to Lautoka Hospital. My today I'm Dendi Beratau. Radio Fiji Boat, Radio Fiji Rosutau. Radio Fiji 2, Teshki Dharkan. More than $4.8 million will be invested to cater for the country's long-term water supply demand. Assistant Minister for Industrial Relations, Alvik Maharaj, says this is part of the Water Authority of Fiji's 5- and 20-year development plan. Pranita Prakash reports the Water Authority currently has 829,000 metre customers. Major capital projects have been planned to improve water supply in the country. Projects listed under this section are Lalsing to River Bridge project, Garawalu, Naisele Sele, Bohol Development, and Nandango to Nandele Pipeline Construction. A total of 210,000 people will benefit from the completion of these three major projects. The plan is to ensure that in another 10 years, all households will have clean water supply. This government has invested more than $2 billion over the past 10 years to make more water accessible to all the citizens of other countries, more than $2 billion. In addition to that, uh, the government has also invested around $9.5 million on groundwater development and in return has drilled 243 boreholes in which 157 boreholes were successful, 43 have been reticulated, so the water is distributed from the boreholes and this has benefited more than 20,000 Fijians since 2010. As of December 2019, the Water Authority has completed 2,375 projects and $120 million has been allocated in this financial year to further carry out projects to improve water supply. Pranita Prakash, FBC News.
Around 30,000 elderly citizens under the social welfare bus substance, subsistence program do not use their cards. Minister for Social Welfare Marisani Vuniwanga explained this in Parliament today when questioned about the rationale behind reducing the subsistence to $10 a month. Vuniwanga says due to the pandemic, they had to rethink of how to ensure that every sector of the economy is assisted and critical public services continue. The minister says there were 82,600 elderly citizens under the bus fare assistance program. Vuniwanga stresses that apart from the bus fare assistance, the government also assists the elderly through the social pension scheme. At such a time like this, government considers that the livelihoods of our pensioners is very critical and will not therefore touch their pension like I said, it's a balancing exercise. Most of those who benefit from the bus fare assistance that's the subject of this question are also on the social pension scheme. Fiji is one of the highest levels of coronary heart disease in the world. The cardio department at CWM Hospital in Suva is seeing an increase in patients, particularly the younger generation, being diagnosed with heart disease due to poor lifestyle choices. Kelly Vavala reports. Smoking, alcohol, abnormal cholesterol levels and health risks such as diabetes and hypertension has been some of the major contributing factors to coronary heart disease. It has been noticed that the age limit is not like the Western countries. It's a younger age population, uh, mostly if a risk factor of diabetes, hypertension, smoking, a young male from 30s above is at risk, uh, 30s to around 60, 70, these are age of patients we see. It also happens in female but more at a later age, but males we see at a younger age. Cardiologist Dr. Shaheen Yusar says the level of heart disease in Fiji is far worse than many other countries. Disease is aggressive. We have been seeing far horrible disease in somebody who is in the 30s, late 30s or early 40s, which can happen in other places but is usually unlikely. There is also the problem of people who present themselves late to the hospital. Even if they have pain, they will try to suppress it or would not come to hospital, would not seek help. And by the time they seek help, it's a bit too late and they already have heart failure or mainly heart attacks. The majority of patients suffering from coronary heart disease have been on the hospital's waiting list since March to undergo stenting, which is now being conducted locally. Kelly Vadala, FBC News. The Lautoka Hospital received a timely donation from the Marriott Group today. 6,000 pieces of linen were presented to the hospital at the Western Denarau Island Resort and Spa. It was a gift especially needed during this pandemic. Philippe Naikaso has more. With hygiene being paramount in hospitals, the linen will assist the medical staff in providing better health care. This uh, generous donation has come, you know, in an opportune uh, time. And it's for us, you know, in uh, preparation to it. Eh? Uh, we always want to have, uh, you know, clean uh, linens and, you know, availability of linens all the time. It will also be used at quarantine facilities. I thank our hoteliers and, you know, the tourism industry for thinking uh, of uh, Ministry of Health in this, uh, in this time, eh? that we are all working together as a nation to try and control, uh, especially for the community transmission. Donations like these are needed as they continue to assist hospitals and medical staff in maintaining Fiji security from COVID-19. We started this initiative since April uh, this year um, and you know we started with giving out with uh, with food however uh, this time we are very privileged to work with the Lautoka Hospital. The donation today was part of Merit Group's Solia Lesu project launched earlier this year. Philip and I Caso, FBC News. And Whitney joins us now with the latest in business. Thanks, Jackie. In business tonight, Fiji's foreign reserves at health level. And in growing Fiji, new food business opens in Nandi. Stay with us. Pula, nadang goa prosa nang garse, goa rekreki. Radio Fiji One, Nando Moiviti. Fiji's foreign reserves as of August 31st stood at around 2.3 billion, 
While providing an update on the current level of foreign reserves and liquidity, Minister for Economy A.S. Said Kim said this is sufficient to cover 8.7 months of retained imports. Said Kim says in the environment where the main foreign exchange earner, the tourism sector, has been drastically impacted, it is critical that Fiji moves to protect our external stability and instill confidence by ensuring that our level of foreign reserves remain at comfortable levels. He adds this is why the government wants to borrow more from offshore. Given the relatively large fiscal uh, deficit due to COVID-19, borrowing offshore helps to avoid a scenario where government competes for and actually crowds out funding to the private sector and domestic market. Because if you borrow more from the domestic market, it means you put pressure on the, in the domestic monies and therefore those people in the private sector will actually have to compete with you. Telecommunications company Digital Fiji will now reach out to communities and organizations to lend financial help during these trying times. The company launched its All In For Fiji initiative, where they have put aside $50,000 to help communities, youth groups and villages with projects that could benefit and enhance livelihoods. Chief Executive Farid Mohammed says the groups have to come up with ideas and projects that will benefit the members of the communities. These are difficult times, especially with uh, the impact of COVID. So we want to bring back some sense of hope, confidence, and you know, uh, uh, normalcy in our local communities. We want to we want the people to be the uh, the, the agents for change in your community and be proud to the work you do. And Digital Fiji is here to support you. All applications must be submitted before the 25th of this month. We now join Sharon from HFC Bank with the latest from the money market. A bit of breather for the Australians today as their retail sales jumped 3.2% in July. The retailers there enjoyed another strong period of sales with gains in all states and territories except Victoria. But this was not enough to draw attention to the Aussie dollar. Meanwhile, the US dollar index dipped slightly following their labor market report. The initial claims for state unemployment benefits totaled a seasonally adjusted 881,000 for the week ended August 29th, compared to over a million the prior week. But the figure still remains extremely high, one of the several signs that the labor market recovery has been losing steam as the pandemic continues and government support lapses. In the Eurozone, the European Central Bank is expected to follow the U.S. Federal Reserve in keeping monetary policy easy. Investors will eagerly await the ECB's interest rate decision next week, especially after the policymakers reportedly warned that if the euro keeps rising, it will weigh on exports, drag down prices, and intensify pressure for more monetary stimulus. And that's all from your HFC Bank for this week. Kanaka. Looking at today's local exchange rates as set early this morning, with chaos on the foreign exchange, the Fiji dollar managed to gain against the currencies of our two major trading partners, the Aussie and Kiwi dollars. However, slipped against the other currencies we cover. Commodity prices were down, crude oil prices dropped to around the $41 per barrel mark. Gold was down at $1,938 per ounce, and silver closed down at $26.81 an ounce. In growing Fiji tonight, the continuous investment by Lale's Millennium Group of Company has been praised by the Nandi Town Council. Despite the current economic situation, Lales has injected half a million dollars to start up their Meals on Wheels investment. Felipe Naikaso has more. <laughs> It's an investment that has generated new jobs during a time when many Fijians are unemployed. We all have to um, applaud Osman for the courage that he's taking to venture into a, uh, what we call a medium to small or micro business. And I think it's important for all of us to support people like Osman and those that are in the micro to small medium businesses. Lales is now also planning to start another of its wheels on mills in Lotoka as they want to further invest in the economy. To complete a project successfully, successfully is not an easy task. So I would like to take this opportunity to thank the Lales management team and all the staff for their contribution, untiring commitments and sacrifice towards the project in a short space of time. The company is hoping that investments such as these 
will be beneficial to Nandi Town. For those who don't know, let me tell you, Lale is a company where everyone is treated like a family member and all work hand in hand to get that entire project successful. More projects have been planned by the company in the coming months. Philip and Icaso, FBC News. And that's it from Business Tonight. We now join Jamie with the latest in sports. Thank you, Whitney, and good evening in sports tonight. Random drug tests for Skipper Cup players. And fired up Nandi ready for Lautoka. There's some more coming up. Bula FM, number 2 and Seri. Provincial rugby players will begin random drug testing next week. This has been confirmed to FBC Sports by Fiji Rugby Union Chief Executive John O'Connor. O'Connor says they are trying to work out a process under the guidance of the World Anti-Doping Agency. He adds that drugs may even be related to how players behave on the field and make reference to the alleged assault on a referee in Alsori last weekend. It's already in our DOP uh, and I think after this incident, it's only right that we look at uh, that as a, you know, as a possible cause. Eh? Uh, and uh, you know, globally we're trying to clean the game and uh, we're working uh, on the process and we advise the unions accordingly. Uh, at the start of the next week uh, on the process that we will be doing for one day. Fiji Bitter Mara Sevens defending champion Police Blue has been drawn in a tough pool for the 44th edition of the tournament. In Pool 10, they'll take on the Mizuno Barbers, a team made up of Fiji Sevens squad members, Yamavia and Naviavia gladiators from Bono Levu. Meanwhile, the Maris Rugby Club is amazed at the support they are receiving from corporate bodies in the lead-up to the tournament. Akuladama reports. Despite the current economic situation, the 44th Fiji Beta Mari 7's main prize will remain at $15,000. In difficult times, our sponsors have stood up by us. Our major sponsors and all our associate sponsors, in fact, 41 associate sponsors, have stood by us because they see great value in bringing smiles and happiness back on the faces of the people that matter most. Even the major sponsor believes this is the best time to back the event. Global sponsors have withdrawn, right? have withdrawn their sponsorship. But with us, uh, we believe that this is one way that we can contribute to what the government is doing to try to bring back, Fiji back to normalcy and also to give back to the, to the people of Fiji. The Maru 7 tickets will go on sale in two weeks. I'm sure a lot of fans are looking forward to it. There will be limited tickets on sale. Tickets are going on sale from September the 15th at the Fiji Sports Council. Get your tickets early to avoid disappointment. The Maru 7s will be held at the ANZ Stadium in Suwa from the 24th to the 26th of this month. Aquila Dama, FBC Sports. The Nandi football side expects a tough match against Lautoka in their Vodafone Premier League game this Sunday. The two sides sit 4th and 5th respectively on the points table. And while Nandi have performed better recently, they believe Lautoka cannot be underestimated. Felipe Nakaso has more. Despite Lotoka's 1-0 draw against Nasinu last weekend, the Jet Setters are not taking the side lightly as the Blues will be out for redemption. We are, we are preparing well for this game uh, uh, since uh, we want to see how consistent we are after playing against Navua. And then we, we, we saw we made little, uh, some mistakes which we have ironed out. So we prepared very well. Nandi will also be wanting to give their home fans something to cheer for when they clash in their Western Derby. Uh, Lotoka plays very good football. Even in the BOG, they played very good football. Unfortunately, they did not qualify. And um, looking at the match, they played very well. So there will be a tough team. Players have also been told they need to step up and get a win. Uh, prepared well. We have training. We have worked on our weaknesses for the past few games we have played. Uh, we have uh, recognized our mistakes, so we are working on that. Nadi will host Lotoka at Prince Charles Park at 1 p.m. on Sunday. Philip and I, Kaso, FBC Sports.
As the Vodafone Premier League goes into the second half of competition, the Flow Valves Suva football side is also making preparations for the upcoming Inter-District Championship. The team has been playing friendly matches like this one against the Southern Division Police side. Suva head coach Bubs Khan believes uh, some of their players haven't had the opportunity to showcase their talent in the VPL, so having friendlies uh, gives them uh, the opportunity to stay up to speed with the rest of the squad. Uh, basically for the players you know not having game time we just wanted uh, those guys to have game time and and we're basically building up for IDC because we're hosting it and uh, we want to have uh, everybody in the same path as we um, prepare for IDC. Around 200 children from Suva participating in basketball Fiji's Mbula Hoops program. The program runs from Monday to Friday and is for 6 to 14 year olds eager to learn the sport. Former national rep Laisia Sapo Mao says a complimentary league is held on Saturdays for the under 14. Following its success in Suva, Basketball Fiji will introduce the program in Lautoka tomorrow. We're very encouraged with uh, the, the number of uh, children that have come out to uh, register for the program. Uh, we into week six of the program, and the program will be ending in uh, four, four more weeks. We're also excited of, uh, for the opportunity to have the program uh, extend to Lotoka, and um, we'll be studying bull hoops in Lotoka on uh, this Saturday. Jimbati stars Apisai Koroisau and William Kikau helped the Panthers beat the Brisbane Broncos 25 to 12 last night. The Panthers made it 12 wins in a row with a hard-fought victory to stay on top of the points table. That's it from Sports Tonight. Coming up in the world of the weird and wonderful, a look at how COVID-19 has changed the eating habits. Find out more after the break. Hi, Bula. I'm Selai from Nandi. I love Gold FM. Only the classic hits. Gold FM, only the classic hits. And Angie joins us now with the latest in weather. Hello to you and welcome to the weather world. It's the wonderful Friday. We have entered the weekend mood. How exciting is it? And plus, it's the long weekend. The weather for a Friday was pretty suited. Nice, loving sunshine without drops of rain. Now moving to the beautiful west, pure sunshine without any signs of rain. Eastwards from Pek Harbor to Suva, the day was a bliss without any droplets as well. And up north, more sunshine and less drama of showers or gloomy periods. At sea, southeast winds 15 to 20 knots, moderate to rough seas. Now turning to the tides, high tide at 8.15 p.m. with low tide at 2.18 a.m. Sunrise at 6.10. For tomorrow, great weather in the range. Saturday is looking fine. Tomorrow's temps, Suva will be the coolest at 18 degrees, followed by Ba at 19 degrees. And looking further on to Sunday, it's Father's Day. Well, happy Father's Day to all the daddies. And guess what? The weather will be fit for Lovo our outdoor barbecue. That's all the weather news from my end. Have a great long weekend. It's back to Jackie. Thanks so much for that, Angie. In Fiji and Pulse, we asked, which team are you supporting for this year's NRL title? I think the Rufus will win because they are on the top line. I think the Parramatta's will win uh, this year because why not? Okay, I think the Storms will win because I'm a big fan of Bunivalu. Panthers will win because they've been awesome so far. Recapping the main stories, for tonight, RKS principal relocated and students suspended. Two new cases of COVID-19 and PM denies claims of division within Fiji first. Now for these stories and others, tune in daily to our sister radio station, Gold FM. Our poll question we're asking, should players who abuse match officials be banned from playing for life? Visit our FBC website to answer. And our shot of the day, final one for the week, and the picture comes all the way from Koro Island, a farmer heading home with his horse on a beautiful afternoon. 
Send your newsworthy pictures to email fbcnews at fbc.com.fj, our Facebook page FBC News and our Twitter page at FBC underscore news. That's your news for tonight. Until tomorrow from the team and I, have a safe and enjoyable long weekend. Bye for now. Bula FM, number two and a series. Bula FM, number two and a series.